me the thing. Welcome back to another episode of Feature Fan Builds. We've got some neat builds today. A couple of really cool ones, a bunch of simple ones, but uh, very well done. And uh, one that uh, just tickles me greatly. So let's get right into it. The first two are done by Owen. And the first one is a modified retaliator that is meant to look like an MK-14 from Rainbow Six Siege. And given that he used pretty much just a retaliator and a few other parts, I think he did a fairly good job at approximating it. This is what uh, the one in the game looks like. And if we go back to the one that he's built, he's obviously modified the stock to be a little bit more like that one. And he shortened the barrel and then added an extended barrel and then got rid of the top slide and put a side bolt on it and then a, um, uh, a pinpoint sight. And given that he, like I said, given that he only used a retaliator to do it, I think he did a fairly good job. Obviously you could use, you know, worker parts and worker stocks and all of that and get something more, you know, exactly like the one he was going for. But I think he did a very good job given that he only used the retaliator. So I'd love to see, you know, an orange barrel on it just for, you know, the usual warnings about having your gun look too realistic. But other than that, I think it's a fairly good approximation. The second one that he did was a double strike. And what he was going for is a um, kind of a Wild West looking revolver. And he didn't want to use any of the other Nerf revolvers because the way they're designed, they don't look anything at all like a, a, a real revolver. And uh, he was going for, you know, a Wild West style look. And you can actually get that fairly well with a double strike with the right cosmetic stuff. Here he's obviously added a longer barrel uh, and then the paint job to try to, to get that um, gunmetal look that the Old West pistols had. Uh, and I think it looks pretty neat. I, I would love to see a kit for this blaster that slides on and really approximates something like a Colt or, you know, one of the, the Wild West style pistols. Uh, maybe a Colt Navy or something. So, uh, yeah, I like it. Well done, Owen. Next, we have a modified Rapid Fire Tech done by Captain Wolf. This was apparently done for, I believe it was done for a friend. Uh, in addition to some light internal work and um, possibly some work on the the handle. I don't know if, they, if that's what the uh, lever normally looks like, but uh, it looks pretty neat. But obviously done the paint job, you don't see that shade of blue very often. And I think it goes really well with the black and the, the gray accent that he has. He also then has a shell holder on one side and I believe a dart holder on the other for reloading. So I think it came out looking pretty good. Usual orange barrel, you know, warning. Um, and I don't know if this is being used for a specific LARP or what country it's in or anything like that. But orange tips, good for safety. Not all that jazz. But I love it. Well done, Captain Wolf. Next, we have Jonathan, and he has a painted hammer shot that I, I approve of the color options, the, the black and orange. Uh, plenty of orange on here, so that's lovely. Um, but then he's got some white and some gray in there in areas you don't usually see that kind of accenting on a hammer shot. He's done the trigger well and the lower um, cylinder uh, arm, and I, I really kind of like how that came out. Um, I don't know if he intentionally didn't do a lot of the detailing work, you know, the, the little bolts and all of that. Um, if he was perhaps going for the, uh, the borderland style cartoonish paint scheme, because I've seen a number of people do those and they come out looking really, really good. And I really, really like them uh, for a number of reasons. So if that's what he was going for, I think he's done a wonderful job here. <clears throat> well done, Jonathan. Up next, we have a pair done by Chris. And the first one is a, uh, a pink crush done up like a pirate pistol. He took the uh, the pirate pistol above, which I've passed these up in goodwill and now I regret it, uh, and he cut off uh, some of the parts and put them onto a pink crush as well as giving the pink crush a, a paint job to make it look a little bit more wood-like, and I think it's fantastic. It's not the most, you know, incredibly accurate looking pirate pistol. The, the Busby one looks much more accurate, but this one would have actual mod potential and could be very powerful and accurate and very, very nice, so... I really like how he did that. I may have to try to do something like that the next time I see one of those pistols at Goodwill. So I really like that. The next one he did was another paint job. He took the uh, the pump or the, the the rocket launching hamp off of a demolisher, which I've seen a couple of those done, uh, just because people really like the, the the large blocky look of the demolisher, but they don't want the rocket launcher because it's kind of awkward and isn't a very effective rocket launcher, really. 
Um, he's put on a different um, grip to cover up the gap where it was cut off. And then he's given it a, a neon blue paint scheme, which makes it look like a particularly flashy N-Strike blaster, N-Strike Elite blaster. Uh, and I like the way he did the, the silver accent on that. I think it goes really, really well with that blue. So I, I really like these two pieces done by Chris. Well done there. Next, we have Evan with a, a very slight hammer shot modification. It has some of the usual internal modifications. Uh, and then he's put one symbol on this side that I don't recognize what it's from. I'm sure many of you will, and I'll get a dozen comments telling me what that symbol is. But it's done very, very cleanly. Uh, and I, I was very impressed by that. He then also has a 3D printed skull on the front. Which I actually really... like. I assume it's 3D printed. It might not be 3D printed. I'm not sure where he got it, but I like it. If anybody knows where he got that, I'd, I'd love to get one for at least one of my blasters. So let me know where that came from, because I, I like how that came out. Next, Drew has done an absolutely gorgeous Strife and Centurion integration, which I've heard people refer to as a Stryon? Stryon? I'm not sure how you pronounce that exactly. Um, but absolutely beautiful integration. He's got some 3D printed parts, the, the lower rail cover as well as a barrel. Uh, it has the Select Fire kit in it, as well as, I believe, the RE Armory handguard. And then that paint job is absolutely beautiful beautiful i'm i'm not sure how he did it either a lot of a lot of taping or some other material in order to 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 cover up in order to get that uh, honeycomb pattern but i really really like how that came out absolutely beautiful design all around so well done drew next we have a silly one that i thoroughly approve of this was done by nerf painter and ironically isn't painted, but he refers to this as Hemlock, because it is a quick and terrible death. And it is, as it appears, a Regulator, a Rampage, a Rapid Strike, and one of the Rocket Launcher stocks, all duct taped together, very Ripley from Aliens style, and this was built for an HVZ. Uh, so rather than reloading, uh, switching magazines or whatnot, or drawing another blaster, he can simply rotate it 90 degrees and have a new blaster. Or he could even hold two of the handles at once and fire them both if he went for the two electronic ones. And this is the absolute most ridiculous HVZ blaster I think I've ever seen, and I love it. Because it is completely absurd. Um, and I, I approve of this kind of absurdity and silliness when it comes to HVZ, because HVZ should not be taken seriously. Um, a lot of people look at all the, the gear that I wear for HVZ and are like, why do you take this so seriously? It's like, I'm, I'm not. This is an absolute ridiculous amount of gear to wear in HVZ. It's not practical, and that's the whole point. And something like this, honestly, I think would actually, would probably work fairly well <laughs> once you got used to it. It might be kind of heavy, but having all of those different blasters all attached like that would be potentially quicker than switching blasters or switching magazines, so... I think it's neat. I think it is silly, and I think Nerf Painter ha might be onto something here. Up next, we have Austin, and he has two blasters. He has a beautifully painted and modified Alpha Hawk that he has put an XBZ in, so that's why the long barrel. I don't know if that barrel is actually copper, or if it just has been painted copper, or is anodized aluminum, or something, but. Um, it, it looks beautiful uh, against that green. Um, he's also done the, the stock in black, and then, like I said, he's got an XBZ in there, so it's no longer a revolver, which I really, really like this. I may try doing this rather than building a long strike XBZ sniper rifle, just because I really like the Alpha Hawk's form factor. Um, so I may, I may do something similar to this, honestly. I really like... I don't know what kind of a breach he's got on it. It doesn't show. Um, and that one might be something that I would need to look into is how I wanted to do a, some kind of a breach on it, which the long strike might be the better option there because you can actually have a, a reverse bra a full brass breach that actually loads from a magazine. But uh, I just really like the form factor on this one, so I may have to, to look into that one. The second one he did was a paint job and some uh, obvious internal modifications on a rapid strike. Gorgeous red, deep brown and maroon. I don't know what colors you want to call those, but 
absolutely beautiful accenting the way he's done the, the little grooves here, the, the, the lighter color, and then the outside is the dark color and almost has a burnt look to it. Beautifully done. Uh, he's got, got what I assume is a voltmeter on the side as well as heavier motors, though he doesn't have motor covers. I don't know if he plans to get those eventually. I recommend it rather than having your, your green board exposed like that. But uh, yeah, absolutely beautiful paint jobs on both of these. I really, really like them. So well done, Austin. Up next, we have a whole series of paint jobs by Trashed Teg. I don't know if that is how he has it pronounced, but that's how it looks when it's written out. So up first, we have a pair of painted Harrahs. They have been hydro-dipped. They also have... Uh, rewired for lipo, speed controllers, and voltmeters. And the hydro tipping is absolutely gorgeous on both of these. That uh, galaxy look and then the, the cartoons on the other one. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, following that, we have a hammer shot that has a 3D printed 8-cylinder, uh, an extended hammer, and then obviously hydro dipped and beautiful. The fire strike there was apparently his first hydro dip. Uh, and also has a spring upgrade, but that's all it's got internally, but there's not a whole lot else to do to a fire strike. You could brass the barrel, I suppose. Um, and then he's got that, what he referred to as a pirate pistol with a, a double strike with that blunderbuss barrel that I, I really kind of like. I've always liked blunderbusses. And that one, um, I like how he did that one. Um, I, I believe it was a, a gift for a friend, so thus the, the non-orange barrel for cosplay use or however he was planning to use it. Um, and uh, I really like it. And then the last one here is another Galaxy Hydro Dipped Strife that was done for his girlfriend. It has a rewire and MOSFETs, but that's it for now, but obviously the potential to upgrade it further to ingratiate himself further, I imagine. But beautiful Hydro Dip jobs. I really need to learn how to Hydro Dip when I have room to get another whole skill set set up, but very done, trashed tag. Up next, we have Ravenock and a series of printed and modified blasters, starting with a pair of Mavericks, which are, of course, an absolute Nerf classic. They have spring upgrades and have had their ARs removed. We then have a pair of Recons that have also been given paint jobs, had their ARs removed, and spring upgrades. The red one then has a custom 3D printed power stock um, tube, which is... A really cool idea. I don't know if he's made those STLs available, but I'd love to get my hands on one for a couple of mine that I'd love to do power stocks on, so those look absolutely great. We then have this gotcha thing, which I assume is a, originally a paintball blaster of some kind, that he has rebarreled to fire nerf darts, and apparently it is his most powerful single-shot pistol. So apparently the gotchas have some, some power to them. Next, we have a Raven that has a custom barrel put on it. He got this barrel from a, an auction or a, a, a group of, like a... He bought it secondhand and it was thoroughly messed up, so he decided to fix it up, put a, a, a lower um, cover on the stock, and put it on a Raven that then has been rewired, has worker wheels, and runs on IMRs. Um, hasn't done any further upgrades, but plans to eventually... Next, we have his first attempt at integration, and I think he did a pretty good job. He calls this the Firecade. It's obviously a Firefly with a barricade on it, and then the uh, Nerf Pinpoint Sight, which I really think goes well with this particular build. Um, it has the, the flywheels from the Raven and then IMRs, and has been rewired to handle that. So that is a, a neat-looking build, I think. You, you don't see a lot of barricades and integrations anymore, so... Uh, I really like that he tried one. Next, we have my favorite of his, and the this is jank on a level that you rarely see. This is truly beautiful jank work right here. The, the, the chassis of this, the main shell of this, is a plastic table leg. He, in fact, calls this the table jank, which there's why. That is, in fact, a table leg that he has built a blaster into, the handle is from an Apollo. The magwell is a modified um, Caliburn magwell. And then it uses a Tommy 20 pusher. And is absolutely brilliant, if you ask me. I think he's done a wonderful job. Uh, it runs on a 2S LiPo. And, uh, yeah, I, I like 
the the innovation that went into this, the fact that the shell is not even a nerf blaster of any description, is like I said, jank on a level you just don't see much anymore, and I love it. And last but not least, we have another very well done Strife Centurion integration. Um, paint job is very, very consistent. I like the silver accent work. That shade of red and uh, silver go beautifully together. Kept all of the orange parts orange. I applaud him for that. Has uh, a long barrel on it with the, the metallic orange tip. Very, very nice. I, I really like the, the work he did on this one. So very well done. Um, Revenok. Revenok? Revenok. Ravenock. Next, we have General375 underscore Noble9. And that is, in fact, his Instagram handle if you want to take a look at some of his other paint jobs, because apparently he has a bunch there. I haven't checked it out myself yet, so hopefully there's actually something there. But he has done an absolutely absurd level of modifications to a Stampede, which, of course, again, being a classic Nerf Blaster, I thoroughly applaud. He's done all the usual things. He's done the classic Penny Mod, um, an extended spring, AR removal, and drop cylinder. And then he's added a barrel, he's added a foregrip, he's added a sight, he's done a paint job. It's fantastic and ridiculous, and I love it. So, well done, General375 underscore Noble9. Check him out on Instagram, and let me know if he actually does have any really good paint jobs over there, because then I will have to wander over there and check it out myself. Up next we have Damien from Poland, I believe, and he has a number of cr very creative builds and a couple of really nice paint jobs. The first one is this phaser build that is built entirely out of non-costume phaser bits. I, I don't know what the original, what the handle and the, the body even is. Uh, it has some matter of Rebel Blaster inside it, and... From a dist at first I thought it had it was made into a, a costume phaser, but uh, in, he showed some of the, the making videos or pictures to me, and it definitely isn't, but he's done a really good job of making it look like one, the way he's done the paint job and just the general, you know, um, inline look of it. He also has made a custom holster for it, a belt holster, that I really, really like this design. I think it's really, really well done, so... That is absolutely cool. He then has a painted centurion um, that is used for cosplay work, thus the lack of an orange tip, so don't concern yourself with that overly. Uh, but a beautiful deep blue. I love the way he's done the blue and then the gunmetal gray uh, and the weathering. Um, he just did a really, really good job on this paint job. I, I very much approve of it. And then finally he's got a rapid red that is done in colors that I thoroughly approve of. The orange and black, of course, with the Fox logo, and then the metallic look underneath with the weathered look. Absolutely beautiful. I really need to get around to modifying a couple of these. I've got enough of them, and I just need to find the time to make up a pair. I want to do an all-rebel pistol loadout, and uh, these are going to be the, the the big guns in it. The, the hip holster, or hip blasters, will be a pair of these, and then... Um, the torso will be uh, a whole series of smaller Rebel pistols um, that'll be pull and drop and then eventually get down to this one with magazine fed. So um, this has inspired me to finally get around to working on that. Hopefully I'll find the time. Love the paint jobs. Well done. And then last of all, we have another pirate pistol build. This one made out of a Rebel Jolt. And he's then done a lot of epoxy work and added his own barrel and the um, the... the um, the catch mechanism and the, the, the hammer and all of that. And the paint job, absolutely beautiful. Love it. I don't know if the ramrod actually works, if it's actually used to ram a dart further in, or if it's purely decoration. But if it's functional, then that's absolutely genius. So, well done there. Next we have Dylan and his um, Deadpool-themed regulator paint job. Um, he's got, I believe that is a... Um, the barrel that he's got on there can be gotten at NF Strike, and then he's got the actual regulator stock, and then he's done a, a beautiful red uh, and Deadpool paint job. Uh, love the way he's used the gray. Again, I'd love to see orange on the barrel, but, you know, for all I know, this is being used for cosplay, but orange barrels, always good. Um, but the weathering, the fact that it, it looks like it's been through 
again, it, it kind of has a, a burnt look or a smoked look to it on the edges. And I think that actually is really, really nice and, and well done on this. So, well done, Dylan. Next, we have another um, submission by Nerf Painter. And this time, it's actually painted. And as you can see, it is an Alpha Hawk. That has had uh, an extended barrel put on it, as well as had the the stock painted black. Now the the Alpha Hawk normally has orange, which is one of the things I like about the AccuStrike line. Um, but the, he's done a much more vibrant orange and then accented it in black, which I think looks much better than the lighter orange and gray that the AccuStrike line tends to have. So I really like how this paint job came together. Um, not much in the way of internal modifications, but that is something he is looking into doing possibly in the future. So. Really like that one from the Nerf Painter. Last but not least, we have my favorite from this particular episode. This is from Kill House 16, and it is a modular Master Key Rampage Pump Grip replacement. So it replaces the, the, the Rampage's pump grip, and then it uses a jolt to, as the main powering mechanism, and then he has created a series of different barrels that you can attach to it. So I don't know if this was inspired by Iyer or if he'd come up with this long before Iyer, you know, was known to the world. Uh, but it'll fire, as you can see, rival rounds, uh, a, a cut down mega dart, a full um, elite dart, cut down elite darts, and then cut down off brand darts. Now, it uses a jolt, so it doesn't have a whole lot of power. Uh, if you were to use something like uh, a Big Shock, maybe it would have more, but I don't know if that would fit in the, the grip he has there. Uh, but it doesn't have a lot of range, but it gives you all of that variety, both in m firing multiple rounds and firing specialty rounds, which if you're playing HVZ, where supers can only be taken out by Mega or above, like Ragnar Oktoberfest, um, you wouldn't need a lot of range. You just need to be able to get in close and get that one shot with your underslung item. And I'm just a big fan of having of adding anything that gives you more variety, more anno types, some functionality you didn't have before. And I also don't like the vertical foregrip on, you know, pump grip on anything. So I approve of replacing it, and I approve of, very much approve of replacing it with something that's useful. So that is absolutely gorgeous. I love the whole concept here. And the, the other modifications he made, adding the barrel attachment point and uh, the scope he's got on there, I think it really makes for a really nice-looking rampage. Um, and then he's got the old um, Raider stock on there, which is very classic and very iconic, and absolutely love this one. So, well done, Killhouse16. Once again, thank everybody who has submitted. I have, I think, 100 and... 40 some odd submissions I still need to get to and I'm getting more every day so it is going to take me a while to get through them all I may have to start not talking so much about them if I want to get more in an episode and just showing them off or having a slideshow at the end of honorable mentions that are just simple paint jobs or something uh, let me know what you guys think would be the best way to try to get more into an episode but not have to not give the really good ones their due um some suggestion. Let me know what would you guys would like to see. If you'd be happy with just being an honorable mention in a slideshow if all you submitted was a simple paint job or if you really want to be talked about, um, go ahead and put your suggestions down in the comment section. Send your submissions to captain.xavier.fanbuilds at gmail.com and eventually you will be in an episode. So thank you so much and thank you guys for watching.